All right, last day, uh, I had to rush over to Target because my feet were killing me the, the last two days, and I wanted to get some insoles. We'll go from there. So, uh, waiting on the fellas. Uh, last day, I'm gonna check out a couple AI Jones. You mentioned uh, pretty much it's gonna be networking day. What what you had a plan? I mean, I planned a couple of like. Um They've got like a bunch of uh, scheduled events like um, education and stuff like that. So AI, uh, marketing, there's a hip hop 101 beat making class. Like there's a couple things I saw. And then um, Grandmaster Flash at noon. Oh, yeah. Oh, Pioneer. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Definitely got to check that out. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Meantime, between time, we see y'all. Back outside, boys. <laughs> Cans, RGB, uh, RGBA, or RGBW that um, that can just have like, has a good. Welcome to the last day of Nam. Me and the boys decided to kind of do our last little bit of walk around, try to get connected with some new folks, and uh, I decided to take care of some uh, outside work um, with my nine to five that was looking to upgrade on some lighting. As you can see, me, I'm talking right now with ADJ. Um, I also was talking to uh, Chave DJ and a couple other lighting reps to kind of improve our old style uh, scroller lights into some bright LED lights that we're trying to throw from an auditorium that has a front of house truss that's like 25 feet away from the front of the stage. And we decided to, you know, try to come up with some options that will be bright. Uh, enough color to bring and just will last a long time and won't overheat. So, you know, I kind of killed two birds with one stone um, in a sense while trying to go through this entire uh, trip, which was, you know, taking care of my own work, taking care of work at home, and of course, just trying to network as much as I can possible with any and everybody. Shout out to the guys from ADJ, shout out to the guys from Shop ADJ, shout out to all the folks that were taking care of non-audio based equipment because it's not always just about the audio part when it comes to music, it's about the visual as well. So um, shout out to all those guys. And uh, the last bit of this NAM, I mean, we really just was just in for a treat and uh, got the chance to check out a couple DJs uh, one of them is the infamous DJ Cubert. You see what he's doing? You see what he's doing? That's crazy. Oh yeah, Rufus Ramsey on the tape cassette scratch. The turntable is That's crazy. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Y'all, y'all join Cuba right now? What? <laughs> yeah. Well, you doing a combination of uh, McGillicuddy? That's a McGillicuddy, and you uh, you doing some covers with that? And if you see his hands moving like that, those are those are those are like clovers or mini clovers that he's using. There's a big science to that and how he's doing that. And he's and what style is he using? Is he using balance or hamster? What is it? Looks like hamster. He definitely doing If you said hamster, then you got the act, uh, correct answer. I don't know how he doing hamster, but he doing hamster. Yeah, thanks. So, I I'm gonna do a little something. I'm gonna go back and forth with Cuba a little bit. Is that okay? Can I go back and forth with Cuba for a second? Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Never in my life I've ever seen a DJ 
do scratches on a cassette tape using his thumb. You got to realize how impressive this is. You know? Guys, this is just the beginning into all of the DJ education you're about to get. Because the next clip I'm about to show you is the inventor of all of this. And if it wasn't for him, we would not be anywhere close into DJing where we are today. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the one and only. The godfather of hip hop, creator of the quick mix theory, Grandmaster Flash. Damn, I walked around a little bit. I see crowds here and there. This is the whole right. Wow. I come from the project, 2730 Dewey Avenue, Bronx, New York, the Ross Neck Project to the Bronx. I can remember as a kid listening to music. In the Sadler residence, you would hear anything from pop rock, jazz, blues, funk, disco, R&B, alternative Caribbean, black. I come from a time where music had no charts. The dopest record came from a, a black band or a white band, a foreign band, American band. Being one of the youngest in my family, I wasn't allowed to touch the stereo. But depending on which system was on the stereo, what day, or whether it was mom and dad, that was my inspiration. My dad was a collector of vinyl, and my mom was a seamstress. So I got to learn two things very early in age. The importance of vinyl, getting my ass kicked every time my father would say, stop touching my records. And I got to understand the importance of a needle and material because my mom was a seamstress. In my teenage years, listening to music, I would notice when the song would play the intro and then uh, they go into it goes into the verse. Then when it came time for the drummer to play, that particular part was always unjustifiably too short. So I must tell you, yeah. I came up with this science and math called the quick mix theory out of anger. Why does the drummer solo so short? I took my teenage years to not go outside and play, not go to the basketball court, not go chasing chicks, just figuring out why. It was pretty difficult to get people to understand what it was that I was doing. Why did I mark the record with a crayon? Why did I put my fingertips on vinyl? Why did I do that? But here we are 50 years later, and the producers, took my hand to vinyl technique and put it into a sampler and they gave birth to a record business. This thing that I did with, with, this, with, with duplicate copies of the record became the music bed for human beings to speak on. Today they call it rap and I am the inventor.
face. I just wanna do my thing. Record stores, Salvation Army, going to people's houses, asking them, Mom, you got any records in the closet that you don't want? I will come back with a shopping cart and come get them. A lot of these records here came from people's houses. Somebody put a hand in the air if you enjoyed yourself. If you enjoyed yourself. Taylor's in here. You remember these songs, Chris? Yeah. Shout out to Chris. now reached the end of tonight and the end of Nam 2023. Thank God and so grateful that we was able to do this experience with everybody. Just so happy to meet all the people that we got the chance to meet and talk to and do business with and collaborate with. And I hope that we can all do this all over again. Shouts out to my man, uh, Oscar, my cousin, who came all the way from Orlando, Florida with us and holding down the camera for the majority of tonight's event uh, to this whole weekend. And uh, shouts out to my right-hand man, Crow Wheezy, Terrible Cereal, holding down the fort. And uh, yeah, call it a night. Man, 2023, we out. It's over. <laughs> it's all over. And now it is time for us to take a look back and a recap over everything we endured and I'm going to start with my man Croy. The two of us went back in 2020. You know, we was able to kind of see it firsthand. What did you feel in regards to this year's NAM that was different than last year's NAM? There was definitely a lot more networking and there was a lot of people that were just willing to pull you to the side, check out my stuff or, oh, I want to like know more about you and stuff. And I just feel like that didn't happen as often in 2020. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but it, I just feel like the amount of times we got pulled to the side and like we're just talking with people. We're not even celebrities and like it's just people want to get our attention. So I thought it was a lot more friendlier. The vibe was more upbeat. That's the main thing. I think that was truly different for sure. What do you think are the highlights for you? Obviously, Jazzy Jeff is a huge highlight because, like, it's unbelievable that I basically got to meet somebody who I've been basically watching on TV since I've been a kid, whether it's Fresh Prince of Bel-Air or whether it's him, like, scratching, doing DMC shit or something like that. Like, he just, man, it, it was just unbelievable. And, you know, it wasn't a lot of people crowding around him, but it's kind of crazy to think that when I was approaching him, there were other legendary DJs that I didn't even realize guys like revolution and z trip and stuff like like i'm just like yeah. i'm over here stepping into this like little circle of like famous djs and i'm only trying to talk to one but i didn't even realize like it's other dudes there too that i f with shouts out to him you know the the words that we exchanged in that moment wasn't a lot 
but the fact that I was able to talk with him and he really resonated with what I was saying. That really touched me. And I remember waking up this morning and thinking about it. And I was just like, man, my dad would be so proud. Like, you know, they, some of these guys, they're not just my heroes. They were my dad's heroes growing up too. Kind of wild to think that I was able to like actually talk to a legend and one of my idols. And he actually like knows that I exist and he's got my contact information. And that's crazy. That, that was cool. Obviously, winning the headphones was cool as well, too. I wasn't expecting that at all. I don't know, just seeing everybody, like, happy and, like, all aboard. And then seeing some of your heroes and stuff walking around. I mean, it was crazy. Jay, Oscar, this being your first experience at NAMM and somebody who's a frequent flyer when it comes to these festivals or going to all these different conferences and things like that, what was your uh, first impressions? It's crazy. It's like other conventions that I go to, but just mainly focuses on music and people in the industry. It's just crazy seeing all these people walking around that you see them on TV, Apple Music, you hear them on everything, and then they're just walking around like they're normal people. It's just crazy seeing all the different types of companies and all these new products that aren't even out yet that you can mess with and talk to all the people that create it. They tell you everything they know about it, and it's just very, very interesting place. Well, what, what, do you, what do you feel like your highlights were? For me, I got to meet Planet, which is, he's a big EDM DJ. He goes to every major festival around the world. EDC, Lost Lands, Ultra, he's at everything. He's been doing this for like years. It's just crazy for me because he's one of like the first dubstep DJs that I've listened to since like high school. So it's just crazy just to see him. He was just walking <laughs> like normal with his crew. He was yeah. such a cool guy too. Yeah, he was very, very, very down nice to earth. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put my little bit of two cents here. I, I came in with a high level of expectation coming in as my second time here at NAMM, hoping to kind of create that same level of energy this time around, um, as opposed to last NAMM, which was in 2020. Especially when, you know, we didn't see, you know, we missed out on a couple of NAMMs because of the pandemic. We really didn't know much about last year's. I know that they're doing a lot of shift, shifting with, with the times and uh, we're looking back at January. And there was also just a bunch of people that were a bunch of headway about, you know, some companies that didn't make it, the Fenders and the Gibsons mm -hmm. of the world, the Native Instruments folks, you know, a couple of companies that I, I, I look for, pre that I look for as people that I, you know, I'm actively trying to get to know more of. But I will say this was much more of a collaborative networking group. I was so happy to, to have the both of you here and, and we was able to kind of formally document this a lot better than, than last time and we was able to kind of just enjoy enjoy everything for what it was worth mm -hmm. and meet the people that we was able to meet obviously one of my highlights meeting uh devon terrell they're so humble mm -hmm. and dope folks and people just like they come to you but that's what I, that's the thing i loved about staying in california it's visiting it's just like you just have this army as a people that just like are welcoming to you i mean mm -hmm. we, you know the other thing is like you know we, we was talking with the guys from ctm and um you know, to do their in ears and they were just like so like personable. Like people really want to get to know you. And obviously, like there's people that are trying to sell you stuff, but then you just have like those relationships you start building. People that we try to network with, being able to see all these different folks. Obviously, we got a chance to to look at witness the greatness of Grandmaster Flash in front of us. Walk around with amongst all these people. I mean, we saw beats by Jay Black there, Hannibal Burris, strangely enough, of all people. <laughs> Don't know how he ended up making it. No, uh, he, he saw us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But he tapped on. I was like, I was like, yo, what's up, man? And we just tapped on. I was like, yeah. So we, so Animal Birds. <laughs> Animal Birds was there, which is dope. Jonathan Morrison, who is who does a lot of tech stuff. Oh, man, there was just so many, so many, so many people. Right before we left out of there, I saw Michael Jackson's drummer, John Moffat, Sugarfoot, just a, a, a inspirational experience being able to just be there amongst all these guys and it was just such fun it was just such fun i mean from you know and being able to just kind of help out even just the place that i work at helping with the lighting stuff and they do lighting there too and not only that just this could be the start of something bigger and i and i hope that we carry over into the next the next few nams that it, it grows back up again and i think it was a gut punch after the pandemic for all of us, you know, with all these conventions that had to go virtual and things were just kind of like dwindling down. 
and then we was kind of slowly bringing it back up and being able to do this again. I, I just hope to see, you know, that bigger impact. And, you know, I'm hoping for all of us to come back together again because we was able to create a bond of a stronger relationship. You know, you know, these guys have never met each other until now in person. You know, it's just like we've created this relationship. We've created this bond. I was able to kind of share this with people that I love. And I would love, to, you know, I want to do more of that. I want to bring the whole city of Rochester together. I want to give, bring back, you know, some of my old folks from college. Shout out to my, my man Jalen, who was there performed at NAMM this weekend. I, you know, that, I haven't seen him in forever. It was just such a dope experience to kind of see him for the first time in years. So, you know, I'm, I look forward to what, what's to come. Last thing, what do you guys hope for in the next NAMM? Just like a little bit more recognition, not necessarily like being famous or anything like that, but like, okay, we come here and then the YouTubers and the people that we met for the first time and then maybe even some of the big names are just like, oh, yo, I remember you. Like, like it would be cool to come back and be like, okay, you know, the pioneer reps know me. Jazzy Jeff still remembers me from when I like talked with them last year and stuff. Like, I'm just looking to be able to like become a regular in a sense. Like, I, I just want to be able to utilize this in order to get me to that next, you know, platform. Over all the cool gear that's gonna be out there, cause I know there's gonna be cool gear next year, but believe it or not, I'm more interested in like getting to know people and becoming closer and closer. Well, I've heard that it used to be bigger, so I guess bring it back to how it used to be, even more exhibitors than before. I agree with that. The actual FL Studio booth. Yeah, we yeah. Were, like yeah. where was Universal <laughs> Audio, dude? Like, come yeah, on, there was, man. So the, yeah, there was, I mean, I, I hope that you know, the number of people that weren't there this year will be back in the January now, back to its sense of normalcy. Hopefully going to be the last NAM that's going to be off season. And uh, we just, like I said, we had such a great time here at Anaheim, California. Shouts out to Chuck D for winning his award. 50 years of hip hop. We, we literally got to witness pioneers that graced this earth of 50 years. Their speeches were not sugar-coated. That's what I was very impressed about. They just spoke from the heart and the soul. I almost got tear when, when when Master Flash was talking about, you know, um, you know, he's he got to witness his theory in front of his eyes and, and, and make it a thing where it's, it's now like everybody's seen it. So it's just, so shouts out to 50 years of hip hop, all the exhibitors, all these companies that was able to kind of showcase their work, make new friends, new clients, new relationships with people. I hope that we're able to do this again. I hope for us to create a big community and I hope that for folks to start looking at us as the talent that brings. The more that we come, the more that we grow and more people to the point where people start looking at us, asking us for autographs, mm -hmm. asking us for words of advice. I know this is going to be inspiration for me. You say that it's going to be inspiration Super. for you. Yeah. And I hope it is inspiration for you. And I hope for the folks that are watching this clip is it's inspiration to all of you. This experience is nothing that we take lightly. We take it very serious. We take it very humbly. We make sure to enjoy it because we're passionate about this work. So hopefully for all of you out there that are seeing this clip, know that there's still hope that you have so much talent and apply yourself and you yourself will be that person that they look up to. And I just hope that there's more of this to come. I appreciate the two of you so much for joining this with me. I appreciate y'all for watching this clip. I appreciate y'all for watching all the clips that we're working on. For your man, Oscar Fenn, Tara Baserio, Crow Easy. It's your boy Donald Jordan, the S Town Productions. Speak everything into existence, invest, evolve, and evolve. Now, 2023 comes to a close. We out.